are spreading the field out here. They're in 11 personnel, but they got some fast people. They have Curtis Samuel. They got Terry McLaurin. And the Dolphins are going to show a zero look. Now, what are they going to do out of the zero look? It's actually going to be hot zone blitz. So it's a fire zone. It's going to be really interesting how they are planning on covering this. And I'm going to show it right at the point where they're showing the zero. Like you can see it right there. And we're going to stop it. And it's uh, pretty simple, right? Like you got right here. It's zero coverage. There is nothing back here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At the line, you're essentially going to occupy the running back. So you have six to block seven. There's going to be a free rusher. So if you're the offense right here, what are you thinking? Well, for sure, you have to have the outside guys. Like the outside guys are going to be free, and you got to get the inside. And this back is going to have to fill right here, right? So what do the Dolphins do? Well, the Dolphins recognize that there could be some hot routes, namely, and I want to show it to you here, namely quick slant or flat route with a clear or drag or smoke or smoke with a block. Those are all the answers to a zero right here. Or my favorite, and we're going to clear this up. My favorite, all vert. So what do the Dolphins do to counteract this? Well, since it's a zone blitz. See Christian Wilkins? He's actually going to simulate a rush. Just to occupy the center. But he's going to come out to the short zone. That's going to kill any drag. And Van Ginkle is pressing the B-gap. Right? But he's going to take short zone over here. So he has the flat. And then you have man across. And you're sending everybody else. Which means you're sending one, two, three, four, five. It's a five-man pressure, but it's a simulated zero look. You got six in coverage. This is a staple of a pressure five defense, which is a Vic Fangio special. We're going to run it right at the snap. We'll pause it right here. Rush gets there, and look what they have. If that pass is a little bit more on target, Van Ginkle has a shot at it. Incomplete. So how close was this to an actual interception? Well, now that we know that Van, Van Ginkle is going to drop into this short zone, and Wilkins is dropping here. We know that the hots are going to be right here and out wide to the flat. Right? So, how close was it? Let's see. Here we see the simulated pressure with Van Ginkle in the B gap. It's coming. Nope. Coming back out to the flat. Howell throws hot. He almost threw it right at Van Ginkle. All right, here's the touchdown to Tyreek and um, what are the Dolphins doing on this play we'll show you that we'll run it right until they're set all right the commanders are in a nickel and they have kind of like a two deep shell but they're really going they really want to rob the intermediate area so this safety is peaking and he somehow has it in his head that he doesn't have to hold this hash to close out the middle. He has it in his head that he has to hold this hash to close out the flat. And I don't understand why. But you can understand why this safety is playing off of the hash as he has a linebacker out here on HN. 
and A-Chan's going to beat him off the line. And it's pretty much a touchdown if he wants it. Waddle's running the quick out. Smythe is running an out right here as Tyreek is shaking him and going on the go as Barrio's running the hook. Now, all of this should stress this guy. He's just too close to the line. It's He's at nine yards, and for whatever reason, he is really cognizant of this. It's a three-by-two set, but he's really cognizant of this side of the, the formation because I guess he got a key in his preparation for this game that maybe the Dolphins throw screens out of this formation, which they do. Maybe the Dolphins run glance off of this formation, which they do. Maybe they throw smoke off of this formation, which they do. But you know what they also do? They also run Tyreek deep in this formation, especially when he's in the slot. So um, this is when you see the... How does the saying go? You see the, the forest from the trees. Um, it's odd, but I think the Dolphins will take it. And we're just going to run it. And we're going to run it in slow motion so you can see how it's developing. So you can see what that safety is doing right on that hash. And keep your eye on HN. HN, HN has his man beat. And as you can see, this man has a short zone and he's reacting to... Smythe, who, if he options in, he has him. If he options out, he has him. He's really cognizant of this flat pass. And they're essentially in cover one. And they're just shading this way, way off of the hash, as you can see. As they're not keeping their integrity at all. Because A-Chan is on, has a linebacker on him. And he has him beat badly off the line. Tua recognizes, I got this one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going right here. Safety's nowhere to be found. By the way, let's give credit where it's due. Look at this pocket. It's a four-man rush. You're keeping five in. This is perfect. This is perfect pass protection. And that's why you hit this. Touchdown. And we're going to see it from the, the end zone to see what the commanders were actually looking at on that side of the field. And you keep your eye on the rush, by the way, how it goes nowhere. And look at Theron Armstead's pass pro here. Squares him up. There's the ball. Off to the races. Now here's a really, really intricate run play here. And I'm going to show you what they're going to do. Okay. Uh, the defense right now has them kind of out leveraged because they have a three tech and then they have a... a kind of like a wide nine although it's really like a seven tech uh right here um they're keeping their integrity as far as their linebackers it's pretty much an even front so what are they uh dolphins actually gonna employ here i want you to follow me as i draw this up right here okay connor williams is gonna snap it and release to the second level Austin Jackson is firing off into the second level to try to pick off the backside backer. So they're essentially bypassing the th the th three tech. Uh, well, actually, it's the it's the one shade right here, the one shade and the five tech on this side of the formation, completely bypassing them. Why? Because they're gonna have Durham Smythe come back and hit the cutoff as Hunt climbs a gap to pick up the one shade Liam Eikenberg can close out the three uh this this is really this is the, the best part of this all if this doesn't happen and they don't hit this combination of blocks the play goes nowhere Alec Engel is gonna hit out and close and 
seal the end as Armstead gets out in front. As Cedric Wilson runs in orbit to lead the whole thing. While you have a pitch and you get out wide. Now they're going to miss a couple of these blocks. But it's still effective because what matters, and we're going to clean this up. What matters is this operation right here. Now we're going to run it a little bit so you can see how the orbit motion that they run with Cedric Wilson kind of helps them with leverage. We're going to run it, run it, run it, run it. And there it is. We're going to stop it because that's the cue. As soon as Tua puts his hands up, that's the cue that the ball has to be coming because he already set the orbit motion in motion. And now he's sending it away. And as you can see, they gained a little bit of leverage from out here to in here with this guy. But none of this works if they can't hit the seal and they can't pull Armstead. They're going to mix miss the backside blocks. But once you get out wide and you have Armstead out here, um, most are essentially going to do the rest. It's a great design. It's an intricate design. It was very hard to hit. And they were not perfect by all means on this play as they did miss a lot of backside blocks. But what's important is Smythe occupied his man on the cutoff and... The most important part of this entire play is that Ingles seals the end and he does that. And Mostert gets out wide. We're going to run it so you can see it happen. Like there's one whiff, there's another whiff. They do occupy and they do get the cutoff. Armstead tries to get another hand on him. That slows down Mostert, but Mostert's already 9 yards, 10 yards down the field. So... Execution at the point of attack actually got this play downfield, and we're going to watch it right here. And we're going to pause it. I just want you to watch this part of it. Right here. Because that makes the entire play. And once you can get out wide, most can even do the rest. Now, you don't hit the backside blocks, but Smythe hits his cutoff. Hitting the cutoff allows this play to get out wide because that way the end can't shoot the B to get him on the backside and stop him for a no gain or maybe a two-yard gain. Maybe possibly a loss depending on how good the player is. So once you hit the cutoff and you seal the end, you're getting your running back out on the perimeter and then the rest is down It brings the orbit, and I want you to watch 47. 47 comes inside the hash. You gain the leverage. Now the orbit comes out, and notice they never regain the leverage again. You're out on the perimeter. We would have liked to see Armstead get that one because then that allows Moser to pick up steam. Never mind. Nine yards. All right, Dolphins are facing kind of a, a zone here. And what they're going to do here is they're going to run a similar concept to each side. Uh, Tyreek is running the deep post. As Waddle is also going to run it. And they're going to try to mesh uh, about 10 yards apart. So it's kind of a high-level concept. But I want you to understand what's going on on this side of the read. Because it's the field side. On this side you have... Smythe working underneath. Burrows is, stre is stretching as HN is in motion. We're doing this again. This time, since they're in zone, they're matching up. It's like a match zone. They're going to have the safe the, the corner out there, but he's giving him his space. And HN is going to work underneath. Now, understand that Tua is looking at this as the primary. Had he come off of it earlier, you would have had HN with a ton of space underneath. It's another passing concept that they worked on in training camp that they employed in this game and that they're slowly rolling out this season. We're going to clean this up and we're going to run it. 
And uh, I want you to understand that as these posts get exhausted, especially at the mesh point, the receivers understand. Whenever you watch a replay and you see a receiver just runs a post and he's running his post into infinity, uh, that receiver is not doing his job. He has to understand that past the mesh point, once they are either together or within 10 yards, they're peeling back. They're peeling back toward the quarterback. But I want you to watch A-Chan underneath. And we're going to stop it. If he comes off of the post a little earlier, I'm going to stop it. If he comes off the post a little earlier, look at all of this room. If he comes off right here, although he's peeking this window, he wants to see if he bends it. He doesn't like how the leverage, and you can see it, is not favorable to get this route. So two is going to come off of this. If he Had he come off of it right here once he spotted this, he would have seen A-Chan right here. He comes field side. Look at all of this green grass that he could come to. Look at all the blocks he could possibly pick up as well. So this is a very interesting design. We're going to run it. Now you see they reach their mesh. Here's their mesh. And it's time to peel back. And we're running it. Tua gets out of the pocket. They're peeling back. Tua spots a wide open waddle. Waddle just drops it. Has he, if he catches it, he might even have the leverage to take this the distance. All right, this is a spectacular design. Uh, commanders are in some type of declared cover three. Um, could even be a box three. I mean, a box six, I mean. Uh, meaning you're going to have six within 15 yards of the intermediate zone, which is always five yards from the line of scrimmage. But it's kind of obviously cover three. So what do the Dolphins have going here? That makes this such a great design. Well, they're going to flood this side of the field against cover three. Uh, consummate cover three beater. You have Tyreek doing his little crouch thing. He's going to come in motion. He's going to take it deep and bend it as he should to the flag. And I'll tell you why. The reason why is because they're flooding this, this zone right here. With the deep out, Cedric Wilson, and Smythe is coming underneath. They're going to have three to two on two defenders. So they're going to have three pass catchers on two defenders. This is one of those reads where Tua should not even look to the play side. This is a field side play against this coverage. This is uh, one of those moments in the game where your wide receiver's coach or your quarterback's coach looks onto the field and says, Yes. We got the coverage we wanted, and we should be able to hit this play. And we're going to run it so you could see what I mean by a coverage getting beat. As far as the rush, it's a simulated rush, and it's a cover five. You can see it already. Like, let's count the numbers. How many defenders are on this side of the hash? You got one. You got two. How many dolphins? You got one. You got two. You got three. You got three pass catchers for two defenders. Now, where is the safety? He's on the hash. He's on the middle of the field. You do not throw it to the post. You got to throw it to the flag. You throw it to the flag. It's one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback. Should be home free. Great concept by Mike McDaniel. And you kind of got lucky there with the coverage. The coverage was perfect. And as you can know, as you notice, it's and let's let's circle this, okay? It's third down. See it up there. So maybe Miami had maybe they had it in the game plan that the commanders would roll out a cover three. And maybe if you ran 
some type of three by one set to the field side, they would stay in cover three. They wouldn't get out of it. Ideally, you want to be in at least two deep shell right here against this, right? So if they stay in cover three, you run this concept to the field side, you're going to get exactly what you got, which is Tyreek one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback. And there it is. Tua throws it to the flag where he should be. And it's a touchdown. So, to repeat, for those that, you know, don't know ball, when you could gain three pass receivers on one side of the hash against two defenders and one of them's going deep, that means that there's more defenders in the middle of the field, which means you throw the deep man to the flag to avoid the count of defenders. That's what Tua did. Tyreek adjusted touchdown now i can appreciate great defense and this is great defense uh this is a three by one set to the field side so we know what we're working with here uh they're going to simulate a pressure here but it's not really what you think it looks like this is what they're bringing right pretty simple right well that's not what's happening uh what's happening here is that they're coordinating five-man pressure with david long who in this case is off because you have one, two, three, four. And this is essentially uh, quarters cover six and it's middle of the field open. Um, actually middle of the field close, I apologize. Uh, so I'm going to show you exactly what they're going to do here as far as simulated pressure. And all of this takes a lot of coordination, a lot of practice, but it's so well orchestrated. Like they are bringing this man, they're bringing him. But Andrew Van Ginkle is going to come out to the short zone, try to close out any crossing route or anything hot, as they're going to bring David Long off the edge. That's going to hurry him because essentially they're just bringing four rushers, but they're going to essentially put Leno here in a two-by-one predicament, which means he'll pick up Chubb and allow the free rusher. Now, had they released this back, they have Duke Riley with the flat responsibility. You got X here and bump. So he's going to carry his man and then come back as Brandon Jones has him deep. And everywhere else, except essentially in quarters coverage. So you're dividing up the field. Right? So it's like a half quarters, two deep man concept kind of intricate very well orchestrated but the key here is hurrying sam howell up and you're going to do that with this two by one blitz which means howell's going to get rid of it quick and the key to all of this is of course tackling because none of this has helped if you miss tackles let's run it and I want you to see the orchestration from Andrew Van Ginkle and David Long. Here comes David Long, and it's two by one. Like you gained the two by one. So Howell is checking down, throwing out to the flat. Now, what kind of predicament are the Dolphins in right here? Of course, that they, they closed out the middle of the field here, and they did the simulated pressure uh, that they actually gained the two by one on. So David Long came in, Howell is releasing correctly. He's throwing the ball correctly. He's going where he has to go with this football. But sticks are right here. Can he get there? Well, you already have one man peeling. So theoretically, he should have the sideline closed out. And you have the guy here pursuing. Right? But who's making the tackle? I want you to watch this. Elite players doing elite things. You saw where he started running. You saw where he caught it. You saw where Jalen Ramsey took off from. Took off from the 50. Look at where this tackle is made. Made at the 47. And he's letting him know about it too. Now I want you to see it from the end zone view. 
So you can see at what Sam Howell is looking at. And right here, you have the predicament. It's a two-by-one blitz, right? Which usually means, you know, uh, you're going to get the guy who's closer to the quarterback. So it's the guy who's inside. Now, sometimes what you might do is you might stunt one in, right? And then run the guy right behind him. Or you have one guy go wide and then you have one shoot the B-gap. It's a whole combination of things you could do. Sometimes you could hit and, and um, you could hit the tackle to try to run the end inside. And then you delay the linebacker. It's a bunch of things you could do, but here they just run a straight two by one blitz, which means that they're just going on the outside toward the quarterback, trying to induce a quick throw, which is what they get. As far as progressions, Sam Howell does it correctly. He throws to the vacated side and he throws to his back. Dolphins were just really, really good to react and to tackle. There's a two by one blitz. He sees the free rusher. He throws to the vacated side. And now the Dolphins are in pursuit. There's the sticks. Jalen Ramsey, great tackle, great defense.